All right, let's talk about the licking thing real quick because all the traditional hockey guys getting up in arms about this, it's just, it's fine. It's just a lick. Like, this is Brad Marchand being a piece of shit. That's why he's a piece of shit because he gets under, pe under people's skin and he more than occasionally cheap shots people. But this is what he does. He's a pest. You know, guys use their tongues to get other guys off their games. Only Brad Marchand took it literally. Like, if you want to get upset, the thing to get upset about is the fact that he's licking sweaty people. Like, that's disgusting. He's licking the sweat off of two guys. Like, he licked one guy's neck, then he licked Callahan's nose. It's, like, up in his nostril. Like, that's disgusting. That's what you should be upset about. Not the lick in and of itself. The fact that he's licking Ryan Callahan's fucking sweaty, snotty nose. That's why you should be upset about the lick. If you've been watching hockey this year and your team is out of the playoffs and you don't root for Vegas, then there's something seriously wrong with you. This team just will not stop. I figured the Sharks would be tougher competition, but they just kind of rolled over. In the end, Vegas' speed won out big time. And the Western Conference has Florida GM Dale Talon to thank for this. It's his castoffs that are pushing the offense for Sin City. And while the rest of the team is fairly average, having Marc-Andre Fleury put together the best playoffs of his career will certainly get you deep. Will it be one more round deeper? The Jets have something to say about that. The Jets coming out party is still going on and it's hard not to view them as the favorites to win the cup. They took Nashville, the team that very nearly beat the Pens last year, to seven games and then crushed them when it came time to lay down the killing blow. The Jets have always been a strong offensive team, but now that they have competent goaltending, that powerhouse offense has sustainability. And start paying attention to names like Shifley, Wheeler, Ehlers, and Connor, because these long underrated gems are casting a strong glare. I would love to continue to believe in Marc-Andre Fleury and his real-life Mighty Ducks team, but the Jets just seem too damn good right now. Jets in six. A funny thing happens to you when you spend most of the season being the best. People stop paying attention. Of all the teams to advance in these playoffs, Tampa has seemed like an afterthought. A team people expected to win, so, you know, who cares? Well, we should start caring now because Tampa handled Boston in short order. The Lightning seriously rolled deep, so whenever that top line of the Bruins was on the bench, they could pretty much just keep the pressure on. There isn't one player on the Lightning that you could say is carrying the team because they're all pitching in. Even Dan fucking Girardi. He had two goals in that series, for crying out loud. The Capitals have their work cut out for them. It only took them three years and a significantly depleted roster in terms of talent level, but the Caps finally beat the Penguins. It seemed like every other shift the Caps were, wait for it, capitalizing on the Pens' mistakes and Holtby played like he's actually a good goaltender, which he is. Ovechkin, ever the whipping boy when it comes to Washington's failures, gets to prove his true worth in DC by attempting to take the Caps farther than they've ever gone before under his captaincy. Here's one Russian in Washington that deserves a win. However, Tampa Bay is too good and the Caps will just not be able to shake the muscle memory of swinging golf clubs this time of year. Lightning in six. The real reason I picked Tampa Bay to win is because fuck Tom Wilson. That's why. What's going through your mind right now? Finally it happened. Finally we beat them.